so hey yeah we had one of one of our famous Comcast moments there. So yeah, um, sorry about that. Comcast is such an amazing service provider that never dies except, you know, at least once or twice a week. Aha! Wonderful. So yeah, uh, that's unfortunate, but, uh... <laughs> We didn't really get anywhere. I, I took like three steps into this cave and then went, oh, oh, why am I disconnected? So yeah, it was Comcast. It was very clearly Comcast. Because Comcast. All right, so. Uh, we are now in Gee Cave! Or Cave of the Gee, really. Yeah. Is a little bit more accurate. So let's start, uh... Wandering around. And I will show you something very interesting about this place. Strange looking rock. I don't remember if this is the right rock or not. I guess we'll just break it. Well, these are Gee Tribe Spectres. So these guys, let's actually show something interesting about them. These guys, as they are Zambos, are weak against fire and weak against holy. That means if I use anything curative on them, it will instead do massive damage. So anything like a Phoenix Down or a Revive spell will actually instant kill enemies that that are weak to that kind of stuff. There we go. Snakes! I Kareba anime? No, I haven't. <clears throat> I have not. Uh... Right now, the only real thing that I'm watching this season, starting with the El Meloe files and stuff, I don't think it's this one either, but. Okay. I mean, no harm, no foul if I break this open. We deal with these guys pretty easily. <coughs> oh, look, that sentence. Wonderful. That's an enemy skill we can learn. Where a giant predator head is summoned to sentence death upon us. Alright. Probably this one. Definitely this one. It was this one. And 
the rest of the stuff is nothing. All right, let's go up north. Oh, oh, oh. The ghosts of the Gi tribe haunt this place. They were all defeated by a certain warrior. A certain warrior? But even in death, vengeful spirits of the Gi lingered, unable to return to the life stream. We still have much ground to cover. Ho, ho, ho. That's interesting information, Drew Blitz. Oh, right, right, right. I remember this. We want to walk, not run here. I said before, all enemies here are weak. To holy. Wait, not these ones? Nani. Uh, I was actually doing that on purpose to get the death sentence. <laughs> so don't worry about it. No. Oh, there's better ways. We Make sure we don't miss this materia, the added effect materia. Um, so this is actually a very missable materia. If you do not get it now after clearing this area, you can never come back here again. So uh, and I think this is literally the only added effect materia in the entire game. Which, by the way, is really good. It's a really good materia. I should explain what it does. The added effect materia um, quite simply allows you to add status effects to your attacks and whatnot, and or protections. Depending on whether it's on your weapon or your armor. Make sure not to run on here or else you go slippy slip. this box, we've got... Okay, the black megaphone for Ke Ketoshi. Ooh. 
Oh, uh, did you just get stopped or something? Yep, they got halted. Freaking need hogs. At least they dropped the high potions that I'm about to use to heal. And in here we've got an ether. Just an ether. Nothing special. Critical if only I attacked the other one, Tifa would have one shot the crap out of it. So I want you to notice that the animal corpse things that we're fighting right now look suspiciously familiar. Look a little bit like red in a way, don't they? Wonder if that means something. As you can see, this cave leads to the back of Cosmo Canyon. The Gi were larger than us, and were above all brutal. They had invaded from here. Um, had they invaded from here, they would have met with little resistance. Well, let us proceed. Astro! What's up, dude? How's it going? see, uh, this one? Be fired. It's a stinger. All right, the thing's fairly tough. Make it a frog. <laughs> Body's slowly deteriorating from the flu. Oh, I'm sorry to hear you sick, dude. I hope you get well soon. So yeah, I'm on the right path. The spider leads to the item. And also, Akiyama Yukari, hey, what's up? And all that. Man, I lost, like, all my viewers because Comcast decided to Comcast me. Thank you, Comcast. I don't blame the people for leaving. I mean, like, five minutes of downtime is an eternity. Oh, yeah, an X-Potion. Hell, yeah. Uh, this one, right? Yeah. Another stinger. Turn into a frog. So yeah, remember when I said frog song's pretty good? This this is the kind of thing that it's meant for. This these are um, anytime you pass through one of those webs, you fight a stinger for your first pass through. And they're relatively tough. They do some decent damage and have a lot of health. But if you turn them into a frog, then they do no damage, basically. Uh, 
Do 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 do. Up oh, there we go. Bum, 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 By the way, chat, I want to point out this is yet another situation where you're forced to use a certain character that may or may not have been in your party for a while. Notice that those are showing up a little bit off in Fairy Ring. If I recall correctly, that prevents... Oh, Poison and Darkness. Right. White Cape is, uh, Frog Slash Minimum. It's a better... It's an upgrade to Star Pendant. Actually, you know what? Red's kind of our caster here, so give him the give him a talisman. Eh. Wanna go this way? No, the other way. At least they're getting them out of the way early. <laughs> Yeah, totally. I gotta say, the design for their big daddy long leg spider is pretty freaking creepy. That's why it's nice that we can turn into a cute little frog. Nice. Warrior ran through this cave alone, fighting the Gi tribe attackers one after another. Grandpa. Grandpa, that warrior. Oh, 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 we're, we're almost there. Look at the pools of blood below us. What in the world? Grandpa, is this... They perished, and yet... Bodies of the Gi, like stagnant air. This cannot be! I can't remember if this works on him. But let's try. Uh oh. Ow! Cloud is on fire! Nope. But that works. So, we could use that, uh, 
We could always use that X potion we got for a fast, easy kill. But instead, we're going to actually fight him. Let's sense him. Check his health. Hey, here to spam cheer slain. How you doing? 5,500 HP. Only weak to holy. That's why I tried rise on him, but rise did not work, unfortunately. Siphon filter. Take my MP. Also, oh, that damage. It's quite a bit. Does Phoenix Down work? Nah, if Rise doesn't work, the Phoenix Down won't. And he's just about dead from being cured to death. And there he is. We got him. But yeah, uh, the easy way to take that guy out is to just use the X potion you grab in the cave and throw it at him, and he will just one sh bit get one shot. Um, actually, I think that there's like a percent chance for a Phoenix Down or Life Spell to work. But it's, but it's like 10% or something, maybe 20 at most. Anyway, uh, he's not the most difficult boss in the world because he is weak to healing stuff. Uh, but he is strong. He is strong. Thank you. Because of you people, we somehow survived. Tanaki, by the look of things, you've also grown strong. <laughs> you think so? I was right. Bringing you here was not a mistake. Come, what I have to show you is just up ahead. Also, materia. Gravity materia. Yay. Tifa. Tifa, you're in the way. Ready for sadness chat? This is the warrior fought against the Gi right here. He kept them from taking even a single step into Cosmo Canyon. And he never returned to the village again. Look, Nanaki, your father, the warrior Seto. That... that is Seto? Seto continued to fight the Gi here. He never stopped protecting the canyon. Even after the Gi's poisonous arrows turned his body into stone, even after he had chased them all away, he continued to protect us. And he still does. Even now? You thought that he was a coward and ran away. He alone gave his life to protect Cosmo Canyon. This is your father. This is Seto. This is Seto. Did Mother know? 
Oh, 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 oh. She knew. Back then, she asked me to seal the cave shut and not to tell a soul. They said that the cave should be forgotten about. Cloud, my apologies, but would you mind leaving the two of us alone? Nanaki, you must continue your journey with Cloud and the others. Grandpa? Listen to me, Nanaki. They say they want to save the planet. Truthfully, I don't think it can be done. For even if they shut down every Mako reactor, it will only postpone the inevitable. Even if they stop Sephiroth, nothing will change. All that there is shall perish eventually. But Nanaki, lately I've been thinking. Isn't there something, anything that we can do as dwellers? No, as a part of the planet, when it suffers so horribly. Regardless of what happens, shouldn't we at least try? Or are we to sit here and meekly accept our fate? I am too old to do anything now. This year, I'll be a hundred and thirty! Oh, oh, oh! That is why you must go, Nanaki! You must go in my stead and find out for yourself. Grandpa... I wanted to show you the truth about your father before you left. I'm so glad that you came back while I was still alive. Grandpa, don't talk like that. I don't want to think about life without you. Oh, 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 oh. I've lived long enough. Grandpa, you must continue to live. But I'll go. I'll see what's happening to the planet, and then I'll return. Nanaki. I am Nanaki of Cosmo Canyon, the son of the warrior Seto. I'll return a warrior true to that noble name. So please, Grandpa. Seto is... Oh, Seto. Seto. P father So, that's a very touching scene, but I do have a couple questions to ask, such as, why didn't you just tell the boy about his dad? I, I know you made a promise and all, but when the boy was kind of cursing his own father's name and hating him and considered him a coward, you think you could have told him? He seems like a good kid, he probably could have kept a secret. But okay then. On top of that, I don't necessarily understand how the long dead warrior Seto is crying tears of materia. Or so it looked. That one always kind of confused me a bit, and maybe. Maybe it could have said something about it, but oh well. 
Also, for those of you saying, why didn't they just use a soft or similar healing, status effect healing thing? The thing is that those things uh, in the world only work when you get to them to use them quickly. So, uh, say for example, uh, I mean, obviously the video games take uh, liberties for your characters and everything, but say for example, let's say for example, Cloud was hit with a stone spell and we were very far away from a town and we didn't get to town in time, Cloud would be dead. Sure, you could unstone his body, but he already would have died, so you, you fixed his corpse. That's about all you did. Congratulations, you now have a, a fleshy corpse. So, uh, there's that, and there's also the fact that he kind of had three or four spears in his back and was probably going to die of injuries uh, anyway without immediate medical attention. So pretty much he's he made a judgment call like, ah, oh, I'm probably dead here. Yeah, yeah, I'm dead here. I'm at least gonna strike a sick pose that my son can look at eventually. So yeah. The buggy's fixed. Should we get moving? So it's goodbye, Red. That's just the way it goes. He came in handy at times. Okay, so that was actually a slightly less nuanced way to translate what Barrett said there. I looked at the actual Japanese and specifically looked up a video where someone explained it a little bit more uh, accurately. And what Barrett says is a turn of phrase that usually means as opposed to he came in handy sometimes, that he was a of great help is pretty much what the phrase means. Or he was a great ally, essentially, is what Barrett's saying. So, not quite as callous as what it said there. It sounds a little bit more callous, almost like he was being used, you know? The way Barrett says it in that translation. I want to point something out, chat. Notice that all the material we gave to Red isn't in our party. Bro, wow. That can only mean one thing. He stole our materia forever. Oh, no. Wait for me. I'm coming, too. Huh? Cloud, please look after Nanaki. What happened? I think I grew up a little. That's what happened. Hey! Check what? Hey, chat! I want to tell you something here. So, this is another thing that doesn't translate well from Japanese to English, but uh, it's actually kind of very important for Red's character development. So, remember when I said whenever Red was in front of his allies, he would use Watashi in order to refer to himself. But he let it slip when he first came to Cosmo Canyon and talked to the people here that he used Oira when in front of them, as he grew up around them, but wanted to seem like a different, more adult person around Cloud and the others. So, in the text, when he says, I've become a bit more of an adult, uh, Exactly what he says in uh, Japanese is Ora, skoshi dake otona ninata, so yokoto. Which means, uh, as I said, I've become a bit more of an adult, but the important thing is that he says Oira in front of Cloud, Barrett, Tifa, Aerith, and Ke Ketoshi. Which means that he now deems them 
as companions, friends, and people that he can trust and is no longer trying to put up a facade of false adult adulthood in front of us because he sees us as people that he can be himself in front of. Behold, chat! Character development that translates incredibly poorly from Japanese to English. But is very important nonetheless. Stability, baby. Mm. Of having hay stabilities. I don't think it's that the translator couldn't understand. I think it's just really difficult to try and ask someone to properly convey that from Japanese to English. See, if you could just have a translator note next to it then that would be perfect, but because that doesn't, we don't live in a world where that's acceptable, uh, it, it's just not a thing that, that happens, you know? Also, I want to point out that, uh, oh, hold on. We now have something we didn't have before, a serif comb. So right now is quite literally the best possible time ever to have Red in your party because he just got a weapon equipment that is twice as good as anyone else's. But, like I said before, waifu squad. Team waifu. So, chat, we can now make our way past Cosmo Canyon. The buggy breaks down there to force you into Cosmo Canyon if you haven't been there. But hey, guess what? Guess what time it is, chat? You know what they put here. You know what they put here. That's right. We're going all the way back to Fort Condor again. Fort Rowell. Yeah, chat. Did, did you think that Fort Condor was going to be paced any better than before? No. No, they put one there. And then... To backtrack all the way to, do. And then come all the way back. And then you do one scene... Or really one small section, and then hey, go all the way back to Fort Condor again. Really wish they managed it better. Back to the fort. Gotta get that playtime from somewhere. That is not true at all, Wirestross. If I ignored every single side mission in this game, it's still a probably 30 to 40 hour game. If I ignored every single side mission and side quest that you don't have to do, it's still a long game. Final Fantasy VII is big. Big and strong and about to get the friction on.
it just has this one really poorly paced side, que side quest thing that is relatively fun to do, but put at the worst possible moments. And unfortunately, with Fort Condor, it's you have to do it when the mission comes, or you'll miss it. They can't stack up or anything, and you just do a bunch in a row or anything like that. Feels bad. I'm actually getting close to the end of where my notes were that I left off at. Oh, and once we're done disc one, I'll probably be pointing out less differences between the Japanese and the English. I just think that throughout disc one, there's a lot of situations and spots in it that really missed out on big moments. Big character development moments, big, um, like, small Japanese isms that just don't translate well. Stuff like that, that, uh, follows itself in through the rest of the game. And once you know them, you know them, but when you don't know them, it's something that you just can't know, right? You know? When you know, you know, but when you don't know, you don't know, you know? That's essentially what I'm saying. So yeah, uh, most of the time that I played this game growing up, I used Red on my team and swapped a bit between Barret and uh, Tifa. Never used Ketoshi very often, and yes, I'm going to keep calling him that, even though everyone knows him as Kate Sith. And once I obtained Vincent, I used him a lot. Uh, Yuffie I eventually started using later on, but, uh, that's later on. And, uh, yeah. That's part of the reason why I'm using Tifa and Aerith more now. Because, uh, I've never really used Aerith too often. But I do know she's real good. Anyway, uh, 30 enemies... Um, catapults, yada, yada, yada. We've been here. We know this song and dance. Let's just do the same thing we do every time. Some of this. Some of this. There, that'll just ruin somebody's day. All right, let's go. Four bomb catapults. Let's dance. The 
same old song and dance of my friends. I need a defender here. I'm going to need uh, archers first. I kind of wish you could zoom out a bit on the visuals. All right, are you going up the gut? Yeah, come on up the gut. No, he's taking a side path. Look at that. All righty then. This first thing we need here is a shooter. Need a shooter over here as well. There's one shooter, you need a second. For this quest, we should get uh, I don't recall. We'll get something. We'll get I don't recall, but we'll get something. Prepare this man. Or he might die soon. Why are you not attacking? Like, the fuck? Ah, oh, AI. Why is this one not attacking? Just kill it already, Jesus. Boy. B-O-I, boy. That's all I can say about that. Run, Defender, run! Shit, my Defender got assaulted by the Wyvern. And Defenders are bad against those.
And my shooter is not attacking it because... reasons. Alright, there we go. Go attack that. You help. And we'll uh, make a repairman for them. Please repair him. Pretty please. guys sometimes with a big damage get in there boy oh boy he needs some big heals but you Defender's gonna die, isn't he? More than likely. Alright, shooters, go get your job done over here. With enough military might, the enemy can't even fight back. Alright, for the love of all that's holy, heal him. Why are my shooters not even attacking this thing when I just directed them to? Please, end him. End it. Kill it. Thank you. over here to back up a little bit. Two coming, it would behoove me to make a defender. Get in there, boys. Hey, thank you very much for the follow, whoever that was. I can't see who it was. I'm going to say it was Santa Claus. Thank you, Santa. Pencha Stella, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Glad to have you here. I do hope you enjoy the show, and thank you very much for the support. I appreciate it. Right, keep everyone alive and healed and good to go, and we've still got 13 enemies to go, but we're in a, we haven't lost more than one, so we're, we're pretty good. We're pretty Gucci. attacker in front there, and should the shooters do work over there? 
get the defender over here because otherwise he'll just take pot shots at my shooters. And we should be pretty Gucci here. So they are billions stream now? Yeah, pretty much. Alright, get your butt over there because nothing else is going to come over here for a little while. Oh boy, he's too stupid to do it. Hi, Voodoo. What's up? How you doing? Keep preparing that attacker. He's about to attack a lot of stuff. This is quite the setup they've got coming. Got two barbarians stacked there? Oh shit. Close to that enemy and put it in his butt. Don't let him do anything until it's in his butt. Get in there. Good. His butt has been thoroughly fucked. Down to just four enemies, three enemies, and we are in really good shape overall. just needs to back up. Once this guy comes up here, we're gonna have these guys circle around and flank his dumb butt.
heal the crap out of this guy. There we go, nice. one and he's not going to be allowed to do anything. Alright, if you're a shooter, get in range. Go get him. All right, then. <laughs> I think it's always hilarious when the final enemy gets there and just gets absolutely wrecked. Five high potions. That was our prize. Five high potions. Lovely. Aren't you glad we came all the way out here for five high potions, chat? That's, uh, that's what you gotta do to do the 100%. You can't miss them Fort Condor battles. That was, what, number six, I think? Interestingly enough, that's one of the this is one of the very, very few scenes that is technically a cutscene, but you can move around during. That's why we dropped to 15 FPS for that. Bam, bam, 
Be proud of your gachi heritage, Weierstrass. And now that Fort Condor is once more out of the way, we can continue to our next destination. Beyond Cosmo Canyon. card. That's not good. Damn, and it worked, too. Well, so th those enemies are a bit dangerous. Because of the ability to do that stuff. Honestly, I like the Materia system, but at the same time, the Materia system does allow you to do some pretty busted and really good stuff. Sometimes a little too good. have less health than I thought. Also, I want to... I really want to level that up, but... I prefer to be able to haste everyone at once. Whoops. AoE haste! So, chat, what do you think's gonna be past Cosmo Canyon? Where could we possibly go next? Ah, it's these guys, oh no. He's gonna double monster magic, these nerds.
played this many years ago and you don't remember anything? Well, next area is very important. And the reason why we weren't allowed to go to it before finishing our vidness in Cosmo Canyon will be very apparent. So, remember way back, right after we finished Midgar and went to Calm, we had a flashback scene. And in that flashback scene, we saw Cloud and Tifa's hometown. Welcome to Nibelheim. Huh? But, but this all burned down. Yeah. Then how is this possible? My house is still here too. Something's not right. I was telling the truth. I, I remember the intense heat of the flames. I mean, Tifa, you were there. You can totally vouch for Cloud, right? Hello, welcome. What's your story here? This village went up in flames five years ago. What the hell is going on? Sir, please don't talk such nonsense. I was born and raised in this village. Nothing awful like that has ever happened here. You're lying! How rude. If you're going to talk rubbish, I'll have to ask you to leave. Um, er, uh, sorry. Look, I'm a little busy at the moment. What's this back here? man in a black cloak. He has a tattoo. The number six. Hmm. He's holding something. Tainted Luxors. Uh, must go. Reunion. What's going on here, chat? Could Cloud have been a big fat lying McLiar pants? A liar liar pants on fire, you may say? Welcome to the general store. They don't really sell anything that useful. Just your very basics. Nice village, isn't it? We've been in business here a long time. That's not true. Are you connected with this village? Born and raised here. Lived here until I was 14 and I don't remember you. It's not nice to lie. Hey look chat, a man in a black cloak. He has a tattoo of the number 12. Oh, he's holding something. An elixir. Can you hear the voice of Sephiroth? Hey, chat. Remember when we were hearing stories of a man in a black cloak heading towards our destinations? Hey, chat. Remember when you were thinking about describing Sephiroth? Would you describe him as a man in a black cloak? Or would you say he has hair down to his butt? Or would you say he has a sword bigger than most people? Because I feel like man in a black cloak isn't the most accurate of descriptions for Sephiroth, huh? 
Huh. A luck source. Three. Three. Union. A gorgeous woman with a giant sword passed by. Yeah, that's that's pretty accurate. How many long-haired men or katana wielders there are in this world? I've seen one. I've seen two long-haired men and one katana wielder. Must get it. Bring to. Sephiroth. Then, uh, one with Sephiroth. This guy has a tattoo of the number five. He has the number 11 tattooed on him. I must go. Reunion. So hey, this is Tifa's house. Tattoo of the number four. In the Platinum Fist. Where are you, great Sephiroth? Not quite as good as what we got, but it has a double growth on it, so it's an upgrade to the motor drive. So hey, back then, definitely played this piano, but why hasn't it burned? Did I play a little? Why not? Now how did it go? How was it? Is that it? That wasn't it. Damn. Let me try that again. Do you use Merlin's MP first or last? Do you want more crit stars? You want more crit stars, you NP chain second. If you don't care, then you use it first. That should be it, right? Should be right. Yeah. There we go. That's the uh that's the main theme of the game, by the way. It's just a little hard to play right. I heard that melody somewhere before. Played it quite well. Hooray! Let's do it again. What's this? Obtain Tifa's secret savings! One gill in between the keys. There we go. 
That's what we needed. <laughs> so, yeah, if you said you played the piano back in the past, and then you come up here and play the piano again, you get Tifa's secret stash of one whole gill. Yay! Worth. Periodic report for Professor Hojo. One copy activity. Unfortunately, no copies have left the village during this period. As previously reported, it would certainly appear that the copies are sensing something. However, they only ever mutter the words Reunion, Sephiroth, and show no desire to leave here. Two classified. A total of eight people have visited the village this period. Fortunately, none of them were aware of the incident five years ago. No one has realized that the village has been restored to exactly how it appeared before the fire. The staff playing the villagers have also improved on their acting skills. There are no further issues to report at this time. Well, well, well. I wonder if Tifa's panties are still in here. So. Clearly there's something about copies that want to reunion with Sephiroth. And they rebuilt the entire village for some reason. Present the report to the villager, thinking right. If only this was Phoenix right, we'd be able to, but we're not not able to. Something the matter? I wanna hear your story. I've lived in this house until I was 14. The whole village was burned to the ground. You're dreaming, get out of here. Oh, I thought she might have more dialogue, but nope. So yeah, these are all Shinra's employees here to put up the facade of everything being nice and normal. Uh, calling. Sephiroth is calling. Great Sephiroth is near. Inside mansion. Uh, great Sephiroth so, the mansion, huh? That's where all this Sephiroth bullshit started. So, guess what that means, chat? We found out Cloud's Antifa's hometown has been completely restored by Shinra shills to make everything seem normal, and in order to seemingly house these black cloaked things. But why? I guess we'll have to find out next time, because I'm leaving y'all on a cliffhanger. Get wrecked. Dab. We will continue this next time. Will Sephiroth finally show up again? What's going to happen inside the Shinra mansion? Has anyone really not, not know about this game and what's going to happen? The answer to those questions are, in this order, no, coffin, and yes. Anyway, uh, yeah, we'll be continuing with FF7 next time. Partially because I need a little bit of time to double check some notes and stuff so that I can continue this facade of making people think I'm smart. Yay!